Okay, we should now be live. Welcome back everybody to the Storytime Network. I am your resident sleep deprived Brit Mill. I woke up at, I went to sleep at, what was it, 5am then woke up at 10am and struggled to get back to sleep. Hooray! I am joined uh, this week by Just Jack. Why, hello there. I am also sleep deprived today because I went to sleep at 2 a.m. and woke up at about 7. Mm -hmm. So we're both running on about five hours of sleep. I did get more sleep after waking up, but uh, waking up at 10 a.m., but it was very furtive sleep. And I kept every time I fell asleep again, I had a new dream, which was very confusing. Hey, that could be a fun time, though. Dreams are fun, right? I mean, right. it was sort of fun if, from what I can remember, but it's just the fact that it kept changing the scene so much. Anyway, this oh, is... like a badly edited, uh, badly edited movie. Yes. I heard you say Snyder Cut. <laughs> Don't think I didn't. <laughs> well, I was going to say Snyder Movie, not Snyder mm. Cut. But today is not Talk About Our Dreams podcast. Uh, maybe we'll do one of those one day. Who the fuck knows? Today, we are talking about early Shonen Syndrome. And yes, I've put the Macron on because I am one of those people. And I had it available, so I thought, why the fuck not? I mean, I understand it. I can also be lazy and reuse things. And it's a pretty cool Macron, so. Mm. So, early Shonen Syndrome. Uh, Jack, do you want to explain what exactly that is for our audience? For our audience well basically it's kind of how in a lot of shonen uh not all of them but the vast majority of them they tend to have a relatively weak start compared to the rest of the series or at least most of the rest of the series due to a number of factors like needing some time to get started and uh not having a properly built up or explored cast to work with and one assumes, so one assumes probably because of uh, the pressure of, certainly the series in Shonen Jump, of being axed. Oh, uh, that would absolutely be a contributing factor. But it is not the sole factor, because sometimes it's just uh, the authors finding their footing. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it is just, you know, the author not having a uh, full idea of what they want to do yet. Sometimes it's just that the author is a bit shit and that's how they plan to go on. Now, there are a couple exceptions to this, of course. One of them is Hunter Hunter, which has a very strong first arc, but that's partially due to its uh, author, Togashi, being a veteran at Shonen Manga who uh, already had a complete series under his belt. At the I time. mean, in fairness, Yu Yu Hakusho's start wasn't bad. It was still a pretty good first uh, first couple of arcs, I would say. Literally everyone remembers the second big arc better, though. Mm. For good reason. I have not uh, read or watched Yu Yu Hakusho myself, but my knowledge of it tells me that the Dark Tournament arc is considered one of the best arcs in... in not just in the series, but in Shonen in general. I mean, I'm, I'm more just talking about the stuff when Yusuke is dead. Because that's, I mean, it's a very unique start to a series, killing your protagonist off in the first chapter. Uh, True. It's not the only series that's done it, though. Not the only series that has done it. But yeah, um, Hunter x Hunter is one of the, pro one of the best counterexamples to uh, the argument that the Shonen series tend to have weak starts. Mm. Another good counterexample is The Promised Neverland, which mm. some would say that the first arc is the best arc. Though I'd slightly disagree, it's still one of the strongest parts of the manga. Mm. Well, when, we're, when we're talking sort of early shonen, I would say we are, what, talking the first year of publication? So, the first... The first major arc or saga, I yeah. would say, for a given series. Like, the first extended... Mm. Uh, stretch of uh, of either a, a single extended story arc or multiple shorter arcs that kind mm. of meld together. Yeah. So, like for example, My Hero Academia, I would say up through like the the earlier arcs are 
basically most of the content covered in the first season of the anime. Basically, so up through USJ. Yeah, up through USJ. And the ending of USJ is commonly considered to be the part of the series where it truly started to grow into its own. Mm -hmm. Though, again, I would say that that is more of an anime thing, because I remember when I first read My Hero, and I certainly enjoyed it, but it wasn't actually until uh, Izuku versus Todoroki that I really started to think, wow, this is this is actually really, really good. But in the anime, it had you say a run play in as fucking All Might beat the shit out of the Nomu. Be... <laughs> yeah. So Which in that... was, um... I mean, it was spectacular. I think I can still probably... I might be able to remember certainly mostly word for word what was said during that but i can't not a hundred percent sure it's still one of the most iconic scenes in the series it is i mean i mean funimation had sabbat react to it for just that reason because it is it is that big moment uh of the first season mm -hmm. but i i do think that, that shows that there is a not so much a disconnect but there is a difference between you know that uh rising point for anime and that rising point for manga yeah part of it is also like anime has some advantages that manga mm. doesn't oh yes like it's... having voice acting and the soundtrack to work with the ost is is probably the big one i would say yes because when you when but you get a really good when you get a really good OST like you say run, uh, Kamado Tanjiro no Uta, uh, remember, you, oddly enough, remember those, and it really does make it stick out. Yeah, like cer certain character things, themes, or certain like OST tracks just really stick in your head, mm. and those tend to. Uh... Those tend to help make us make the scene stand out. Mm. The other thing I would say oh. that uh, happens a lot in early shonen is they they tend to be a lot more episodic right at the start. They tend to have yes. two, maybe three chapter arcs because, as as we as I said before, they don't know if they're going to get axed or not. Yeah, they do tend to be a lot uh, shorter run overall that's not a bad thing in and of itself either though mm. oh no i mean i mean the the example that comes to mind because i'm i'm on uh viz's website right now looking at the current shonen jump lineup the example that comes to me right now is hard-boiled cop and dolphin um it had very very episodic um arcs uh to begin with and it wasn't bad by any stretch. It was weird and changed uh, changed tones on a heartbeat, but it was made it interesting. I mean, there's also the obvious example that we haven't talked about, which is One Piece. Mm. And that has... Uh, One like, Piece... Blue Saga as a whole is very a lot more episodic than most subsequent sagas. Mm. There's a lot more arcs in East Blue than most other sagas in the series. Well, you'll you'll notice that, I mean, if you've been listening to us talk about One Piece, and, you know, this this first half that we've gone through, as you get further and further in, um, first, the gaps between uh, crewmates start to widen, and time mm. spent on islands starts to widen in terms of chapter counts. Because I mean, in that, f yeah. in the first up until the end of ooh, Arlong Park, I would say, they only spend ooh, half a dozen chapters in... on uh, on an island, on average. No, the the longest more. arc blue are twenty seven chapters. Uh, Baratier and uh, Arlong Park are both twenty seven chapters long. Fair enough. Uh, every everything else is a bit shorter. Like, I think Surt Village is all, somewhere in the ballpark of, like, 15 to 20 chapters. Okay, yeah. And I... uh, everything else is shorter than that. Mm. 
but yeah, but when you look at uh, other arcs, it does, you know, seem to stick out. And as I said, in that first East Blue Saga, you get, you know, Zoro, Usopp, and Nami, and Sanji all joining the crew. Whereas in Baroque Works, you get just Chopper. Maybe Vivi. You get Chopper, you temporary, temporarily Vivi, and at the end, Robin joins. Hmm. And Which then, is still less, and it slows down even further from there. Yeah, because then you, it's the next person only joins in Water Seven. Mhm. Mm so yeah, so there is yeah. there is a definite element of that, and that's that's the other thing you'll notice. I've just recalled, you'll notice that uh, new characters will get introduced very quickly early on. Because it's uh, it's a way of freshening up the cast and trying to gain new uh, new readers. So, for example, um, this isn't so much the early part, but it's it's an example. Haiku was um, doing fairly poorly after Karasno lost that first lost the first time to um, Seijo, and then. Uh, Furudate introduced uh, Yachi, and suddenly everything started uh, trending upwards again. Mm. Um, to give a more recent example, um, Witch Watch, a series that uh, has only had 12 chapters, introduced uh, another main character, I think only two, three chapters ago. Hmm. I think another thing that should be kept in mind is that a lot of the older big shonen series like, say, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, uh, Fairy Tale, etc., tended to have lar tend to have longer uh, introductory periods mm. overall. So they kind of stretched out the introduction of a lot of the cast. Mm. Compared so to newer series which have... Uh, a faster cast overall. Yeah, for better like, or worse as well, because Demon Slayer's uh, compared Demon Slayer's two hundred odd chapter run to Naruto's seven hundred chapter chapters. run. <laughs> oh boy, idea. yeah. Or uh, what was Bleach? Where is Bleach on here? I know Bleach, Bleach was seven. Uh, Bleach was like six hundred something chapters. Where is it? it? Should be there. It is six hundred eighty-six. Yeah, so a little bit shorter than Naruto, but not that much. Um, and then, of course, you've got Dragon Ball. OG Dragon Ball was 194, with the addition of Z, which was at 325 chapters. That's somewhere in the the 500, 500 range. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You look at... Uh, there aren't that many series that managed to make it... Uh, well... The amount of series trends downwards as you get over 100 chapters, 200 chapters, 300 chapters. Mm-hmm. I mean... That's why I'm getting to monthly series, which have a large chapter count for mm. all. I mean, so it's easier to use volume metric when counting uh, weekly yeah. and monthly series together. How many chapters did Attack on Titan have in the end? 130 something, I think it was like 139 or something like that. 138, 139, yeah, but it ended up having somewhere around 30 ish volumes. volumes, yeah, 30 ish volumes. Because Compared of that. Compared to, uh, yeah, Another, like other monthly series like Soul Eater and Claymore had similar volume counts, hmm. like uh, high 20s to low 30s. Yeah. I mean, you've got uh, got another monthly series, Twin Star Exorcists, which uh, I get volume-wise, and it has just under the same amount of volumes as My Hero. Where I am in My Hero, at, well, where I was in My Hero at volume 21 was something like early 200s, I would probably say, mm -hmm. if I had to guess. Uh the latest chapter in Volume 21 of Twin Star Exist is Chapter 79. 
But Twin Star Exodus is another yeah. one to bring up in terms of early Shona Syndrome because, again, that is a series whose first arc was not especially great. Um, it was all about introducing uh, Benio and Rokuro to each other um, and, of course, the concept of the Twin Star Exorcists and then the, uh, the rescue of... I don't remember his name because it's been so long since I've seen him in the manga. Uh, but Rokuro is basically older brother. Uh, and it's only after that point when um, Yuta gets introduced that things really start to pick up. Mm. And again, it's because... Yeah, a lot of... It's because, you know, of... it's because things need to be need to be introduced, relationships need to be set up, and, you know, that's not always the most entertaining thing in the world. Yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of Shonen series also start to get good around the time of, like, a major character introduction or status mm. quo shift. Yes. That... So, for example, you have stuff like, um... Naruto, which had mm. uh, the tuning which was exams. initially focused. Yeah, the tuning exams is when things started getting really good. Mm. Uh, the Land of Legs arc was fine at all, but uh, it only focused on the main four characters. And let's let's be real, the main were, the main four characters are not the not the selling point of Naruto. <laughs> they are not the best characters in Naruto. No, it's a supporting cast, mm. especially like the classmates of of the ma of the main trio not to mention not, out yeah in the tuning exam arc yeah not to mention the uh the villains in the land of waves arc just weren't as sort of interesting i would say compared to gara yeah gara and the gara and orochi maru to a lesser extent are much more intimidating characters than mm. Zabuza and Haku were. Yeah. Um, Which, no... not to knock on them, but, like, Gara is fucking terrifying when he was first introduced to him. Gara was terrifying, but it was also, like, he was also super sad. <laughs> and so it was sort of easy to see where he was coming from, and that made it, you know... He had a compelling depth as a character. Yes. And again, that's not to say that Zabasa and Haku didn't, but, you know, just not to the same extent, I would say. Mm -hmm. There wasn't as much contrast with them. Not to mention, they tried to kill off Sasuke uh, in that arc, and that was clearly never going to happen. Oh yeah, no, that, that's something that you call bullshit on immediately. In fairness, I think probably both of us didn't read that as it was coming out, and so... Oh, no. no, no so... No. In fairness, you know, we had the inside edge on that front, but... Because, you know, uh, I remember reading um, the... Again, this is where I certainly felt that uh, Jujutsu Kaisen picked up the uh, Cursed Room arc. And Yuji Cursed supposedly dying in that, yeah. Oh, Cursed Womb arc. Cursed Womb, like yeah. Cursed Womb arc. No, Womb. The, the prison arc, the prison arc. You know, Yuji supposedly died there, and, you know, I was... I hadn't heard anything about Jujutsu Kaisen, so I was like, huh, is he actually dead? Question mark? Hmm. Well, nope. And it turned out, no, because very few shonen actually go through with killing their main character in the first, uh, in the first arc. Or in the first few arcs. Yeah, at least permanently. Um, yeah. Now, but where Jujutsu Kaisen picks up is on the next arc after the introduction, which is the, um, which is basically the training slash Mahito arc. Mm. And uh, a lot of people will cite uh, Gojo versus Jogo as the first uh, point of that in the series that really hooked them. Mm. Um, which is not to say that the early chapters slash episodes are bad by any sense by any stretch they are very good stuff i mean at, the, at that just... point it was just it was sort of more typical uh dark shonen i would say than anything else and it just got 
got less typical as uh, the arcs went on, especially, especially with, you know, fucking Gojo actually being able to curb stomp anything in his path. Because you, you've had character, characters like that uh, in, say, uh, Kakashi. But, you know, Kakashi, while strong, was clearly not the be-all and end-all of the ninja world. Exactly. I mean, a very interesting series that uh, that um, probably does fall within the early Shonen Syndrome is Yu-Gi-Oh! Because obviously, mm. early Yu-Gi-Oh! was a lot different to what it eventually became. Because it was very much just based around games of chance in general, not just card games. Uh, yeah, Season Zero is weird. Season Zero is very weird. Imagine, imagine reading Season Zero as a... Uh, as a child who has only seen the seen the card game based anime and doesn't know what manga is and so is confused why this book is back to front and also Yugi is killing people. <laughs> I was a very confused child. <laughs> um, I don't blame you for being confused by that. But yeah, like it eventually does start to focus on once uh, I believe the author is Takahashi. Um, start to focus on uh the actual card game duel monsters that's i you know you get the very much the sense that uh he was looking at you know the rankings for Yu-Gi-Oh and realized that was or the editor was looking at the rankings for Yu-Gi-Oh and saw that that was the stuff that was picking up picking up readers would not surprise me in the slightest mm. I mean, even going back to something as old as, as Dragon Ball, the first arc is, you know, essentially an XP of uh, Journey to the West. It's when it picks up is when, uh, so when Krillin is introduced and they go into the uh, first world tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first world martial arts tournament arc is... The point in Dragon Ball where it starts to get good. This is an even more extreme example. Everybody, everybody says I don't personally agree with this, but that's because I'm weird. Uh, everybody says that uh, JoJo's picks up with Part Two. I am of that opinion. I was not a massive fan of Part Two, but I'm not a massive fan of JoJo's in general. Uh, as I said, I'm weird like that. Hmm. Yeah, part two is generally where people consider JoJo mm. to have gotten to really come into its own. Partly but, because the protagonist of part two is much more expressive and interesting than Jonathan. I, I feel like if Jonathan and uh, Teddy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine got into a conversation, anyone in earshot would just fall asleep instantly. That's how oh, yeah, no. that's how bland Jonathan is, if you get that reference. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan is a nice dude and all, but he is very much a he is a very bland character compared mm. to the subsequent JoJo's. Like, not to diss on him, but again, part one does have the distinction of introducing the legendary Dio, but um I mean even then Dio isn't quite as ridiculously hammy as he is in later appearances yeah no part 3 Dio is a lot better than part 1 Dio mm. uh, not that part 1 Dio is bad by any stretch but part mm. 3 Dio is just better than him in every way another example Dr. Stone oh yeah it's no, it is very Dr. apparent Stone. it is very apparent that um from the start of Doctor Stone up until um, the beginning of the uh, village arc or village saga, Doctor Stone just wasn't as good as it was as it goes on to be. Taiju and Yuzuriha are fine and all, uh, but they just weren't a good supporting cast to start off with. No, they they just did not give the right uh, balance to Senku. No. Senku needed a different supporting cast to work with, and when he got that, mm. it, it, the story got a lot better. I mean, I've I've always said that the issue with 
Senku and Taiju being on their own for so long is that the relationship between the two just isn't equal enough. Like, it basically comes across as fucking Senku just shitting on Taiju good-naturedly pretty much the entire time, but it's still shitting on him, calling him an, an oaf and an idiot and that sort of shit. But when once he, you know, gets to Chrome, suddenly he has base the as much of an equal as he was going to get at that point in terms of science stuff somebody who I'm could say, i don't think senku has an intellectual equal i mean he does in the current arc of the manga but yes that's spoilers like in the anime content there is no one who is really mm. even close to senku's level no no not at all but as i said chrome chrome gets close enough that as I said, the insults stop. And, uh... You know, you've, you've got other people to do... to fulfil other roles as well. Yep. What other series? World Trigger. That's another one, actually. Uh, I don't... You've not read World Trigger, have you, Jack? I have not. I, I advise you do. Because um, the first arc, which again is very much establishing um, establishing uh, Osamu, um, Yuma, and Chika in the story, as well as introducing Jin and the rest of uh, Border, but pretty much everyone agrees that the real pickup point is the uh, Black Trigger Retrieval arc, where Jin and Arashiyama squad go face off against uh basically the best border has and again it's a it's a sign of where trigger world trigger is going to is going to go and improve on because it was a very tactical battle which is what world trigger does best and why it's so interesting mm. I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I've read it or even watched it. One Punch Man's first arc. Um, I don't think it really had a first arc per se. It was very, mm. very focused on just introducing characters and stuff in like one shot encounters. It was a very, very much an episodic uh, start that was just that was just solely based around the gag of Saitama punching the shit out of everything, wasn't it? Yeah, the first actual arc was the raid on the um, uh, mad scientist lair. Mm. The the mad scientist arc. Ah, that arc. That was good. Um, how far? Yeah, one punch man has a shorter, um, shorter run mm. of uh, lesser content than most other series. How far in was the um, fish people arc? I think it was like the midpoint of the first season. Because mm. I think I think that would probably be where One Punch Man really started to get into its into its story groove of uh, the other characters face off against this big threat, um, while Saitama takes his time to arrive, and then Saitama wins when he arrives. Mm. Again, yeah. Formula gets mixed up a bit once uh, they get the Sea King, uh, Deep Sea King arc. Mm. That's what it was, Deep Sea King. Oh, poor Moomin Rider. Moomin Rider is fucking great. He is, but he got beat the shit out of in that arc. Oh no, he got utterly beat the shit. But yeah, um. Oh, um, another example that um, actually does not have the anime fix the issues with the first arc is Black Clover. I was about to mention Black Clover. I just opened the page to remember exactly, because uh, in the manga, it's the arcs very much work on a volume, volume-ish basis, I would say. Because um, the first, first volume covers up to, I believe either midway through or to the end of um, Saucy Village, if I recall the name correctly. And, uh, yeah, I think that's Heath... it. And then I think the second volume 
and maybe the third tackles the first dungeon raid. Arc. Second second volume tackles the dungeon. Third volume tackles the fight against Mars. And I think the third volume is where things start to get good with mm. Black Clover. No, Mars is definitely the uh, the fight where Black Clover does start to pick up. And I would actually say that's that's in the manga rather than the anime. I would say the anime picks up with the uh, Assault on the Capital arc. Yeah, which is a good deal later. Because, again, the the issue with, with Black Clover is that it's a long-running shonen, and therefore Piero slowed the pacing down. And part of what was so so good about Black Clover was that the pacing was basically breakneck. Uh, yeah. Yeah was very very quick for a shonen because again when we when we're saying that this the the first arc or to the end of the um saucy village arc that's chapter seven so in the space of seven chapters it has introduced the main character introduced the main character's rival uh gotten them to join the magic knights introduced uh the black bulls and then had the first arc that is impressively quick and in a way that yes while again it suffers from early shonen syndrome it it's not a horrific example of it i would say yes that first arc or that first uh fight at saucy village is um not as good as uh future future arcs or fights but it's a good good introduction and a good development for other characters as well. It's a good introduction yep. fully to Asta's whole not going to fucking give up on this shit uh, gimmick. And, you know, it's the, it's the start of, the, of Noelle's arc to become a, uh, a properly respected royal. As well as Magna just, you know, pitching the shit out of uh, a bunch of fireballs. Magna's a fun character. Mm. But yeah, um, compare Black Clover to One Piece, and uh, you kind of get the the huge gamut of shonen pacing mm. between the two of them. But again, it's it's the difference in times. I would I would probably argue that the axe has gotten even quicker the more time has gone on i would not be surprised we've and, we've had series get axed in like a dozen or so chapters at this mm, point let's see i mean Whereas, uh, our blood oath got to chapter 18 build king got to chapter 20 how it got to that point i don't know it should have been axed long before that uh time paradox ghost rider probably takes the uh takes the cake for shortest period with 14 chapters fucking hell yeah that just got fucking murdered quickly very very quickly <laughs> yeah i think when people talk about the u19 club they talk about sure jack there is uh oh, fuck. lasted exactly 19 chapters just pause. Fucking internet's gone again. I really don't know why it's doing this. God damn it. This is getting very annoying. I don't know what to do to fix it. You're going to need to talk to someone about the, some sort of technician about it, probably. I mean, it's mobile internet. There's not really a lot I can do with that. Uh, 20 seconds till it reconnects. So you're stuck with the current internet plan then? Yeah, I mean, it's... As I said, this is this is mobile internet, so it's a case of... Um, cause this is the only thing that has good... Uh, good upload speed. My usual internet connection doesn't... And welcome back! I'm sorry about that. This is my internet. I can't... I don't know what to do to fix it. 
The I internet don't. will continue to plague Mill for the end of time. I still don't know how this has happened, but for some reason, uh, the guy who streams with mobile data has become the go-to streamer. Yeah, that is weird. It's very weird. But anyway, uh, there is there is a uh, series called Love Rush that lasted thirteen chapters. That really oh, that, low. that really fucking got axed quick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Most series you see get axed and jump lasts at least like twenty odd chapters. Mm. I guess jump has gotten a lot to kill happier. Yeah. Though to be fair with the time paradox ghost writer case, I think it was an issue of uh how controversial the series was. Because yes, because it was... They didn't want to be seen encouraging plagiarism. <laughs> I know that was... Understandably. Yeah, I know that was what uh, turned me off the series. So they did did give the first couple of chapters a read, and it just felt so... so scummy, really, in uh, its yeah, story. Yeah, no, the, like... Me hearing about the premise and the um, main plotline just made me, like... No, I don't like this. This yeah. feels gross. Yeah, it just it just didn't feel right. Um, Trying to think of some other big series that. Uh, I mean, again, we're 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 very much focusing on uh, Shonen Jump weekly Shonen Jump uh, titles. Let's talk about another famous Shonen that wasn't in Jump. Fairy tale. Oh, I thought you were gonna go for the good, good, good example. Okay. Uh, I didn't. I haven't. You touched... can talk. You can talk about the good example. I'll talk about fairy tale real quick. You you talk example. about fairy tale because I've not fucking read touched fairy tale on uh, on pain of death. <laughs> that is to your benefit, my friend. <laughs> fairy tale is not good. Though it does have some moments in the middle of the manga. The first arc is okay, mm -hmm. but it's also very basic shonen. Like, I thought all of fairy tale fairy... was basic shonen. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Fairy tale akin is basically like battle shonen distilled into its most basic form. But also like, the bad parts the... of it as well. <laughs> all it is like the super soldier serum. All the good is enhanced, and all the bad is enhanced. Mm -hmm. But the bad, unfortunately, eclipses the good in this case. Yeah. Eventually. But yeah, no, the first arc is pretty weak, but uh, I want to say around the Phantom Lord arc, things pick up in quality to where it's actually enjoyable. Yeah. It declines later in the series, but a good middle portion of the series is quite good. It just, um, it just stops being good at a certain points, and, uh, we can get into that later. Now, what were you going to talk about for your example? Well, just before I want to go, just before I do that, I do want to. Um, obviously, we've covered a lot of the big uh, jump series. The one that we haven't, uh, Food Wars. Oh yes, Food Wars. Where would you say that picks up? Because it definitely does pick up. There is there is a very solid middle point where it is very good. I it's just the fact that it. Say... It's just the fact that it continues it's... past where it should. <laughs> I want to say the training camp arc. Yeah, I would actually agree with that. Because that's where we get introduced to, like, the al alumni. Yeah. And uh, see how they, how they uh, have made it in the world since graduating. I would agree with that, yes. But we also get yes. how incredibly cutthroat uh, mm. the Shoku system is. That's also when in we're action. in. Yeah, that's also when we're introduced to Erina's cousin Alice. Am I remember that Alice. Yeah, I good. I remembered it. I we're only read it a few Alice months ago. In that arc. I only read yeah. it a few months ago. And I'm already forgetting. <laughs> Didn't leave the biggest yeah, impact Alice on me. <laughs> Alice and Rio are good introductions to the cast. Mm. Um, but yeah, no. Sure. It, it, like the first few uh, episodes slash chapters slash arcs, hmm. they're not bad, but uh, they they do have 
the burden of introducing the cast and characters and uh the polar star dorm cast in particular is like a bunch of wacky characters most of whom don't really get a lot of focus yeah which is a shame because i do actually like, quite like those characters yeah same the issue is like so only a few of them are actually like prominent throughout mm -hmm. the story Um, so the good example that I was going to bring up was uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, I was going to say Full Metal Alchemist is kind of like... Um... I thought that was what you were going to bring up, honestly. No, I was bringing up a bad example. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist is a good example. Yeah. Cause... Like, Full Metal Alchemist is actually... Honestly, the first arc of Full Metal Alchemist is pretty good. It's just the rest of the series is so fucking mm. astronomically amazing that it's kind of hard to measure up to that. Because, yeah, because I'm just... It's been a while since I've um, read or watched it thanks to a certain asshole voice actor. Um, so the first arc was the church arc, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, which does a good job of introducing the uh, main conceit of the series and the main cast, uh, and the two leads, rather. Well, it, that it's a very interesting example, because that obviously starts more uh, in media well, res, like I would arc. say. Like, it's not even an arc, really. It's like mm. the, just the first chapter or two. Yeah, but it, it very much starts uh, in media res for the characters, because obviously Al and Ed are already... Um, transformed. Already transformed and already in the middle of their journey. Um, you get flashbacks not too long after explaining mm. uh, how their origin, but... Yeah. But, you know, compared to, say, uh, My Hero, where the first arc is Izuku obviously getting the quirk and joining ua um or or even naruto you know we're introduced naruto before he actually becomes a proper ninja mm -hmm. so it's it's a definitely a very uh very interesting comparison to um other series and again it's one that um as we said wasn't published in jump and so maybe perhaps didn't have that same level of pressure on it that uh... they would pull off the another thing about full milk is that it was also a monthly series mm. a lot of monthly series have a lot of benefits that weekly series really don't have in terms of like having the creators have more space uh to work with per chapter and more time between chapters for example how attack on titan survived so long <laughs> yeah early attack on titan was rough i mean just i mean uh, it's it's evidence in the fact artwork wise yeah even i mean the artwork never got that much better <laughs> i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna make that declaration just... now <laughs> I, I do disagree to you to a point, but I will also say that Attack, the, artwork is not, the artwork is not the selling point. Attack on Titan had a ridiculously bad case of same face. Oh, yeah, no. No, that's, that's what, been an issue throughout the series. And while it was able to, you know, while you're able to figure out which character is which in the anime because of different hair colors, when the only two hair colors you have in the manga are white or or black because of, you know, not being in color, uh, I pr pretty much mixed up a lot of characters. <laughs> you're not, not knowing the only who the one. fuck they were. Um, but yeah, first arc of Attack on Titan, uh, what was that? It's up not to... a bad arc, honestly. Uh, it was uh, the, um, well, besides if you're what discounting are... the pilot arc, then it's the... Uh, what are we Ray saying? Up, un Shin, up until, know? up until, um, or, you know, when Aaron talking... first in, first turned into a Titan? Is that what we're saying for the yeah, first uh, arc? Yeah, what was it? Trost, right? Trost, yeah. 
<laughs> I've Attack on Titan didn't leave that big of an impact on me, so I don't remember a lot from it. I, I don't remember the arc names very well. One day we will it's get one. Minute. One day we will schedule the uh, the roast of Attack on Titan the same way we we have the roast of uh, fucking Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yeah. I'm so looking forward to that though. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah. That's that's another non shown and weekly shown jump uh, series that we haven't discussed. Um, oh, fun fact! That one runs in the same ran in the same magazine as Fairy Tale. That doesn't that surprise how me. How I found out about Seven Deadly Sins uh, because of the crossover comic between the two. Yeah, that's that's it's Kadansha's uh, magazine rather than Shoeisha's, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, it's uh, Kadansha. And while there is definitely some good series in there, I mean, I'm I'm just looking at it. Uh, Hajime no Ippo is in there. Fucking um, hell. Both To Your Eternity and Tokyo Revengers are in there. Both uh, highly, getting praised, highly praised series uh, getting anime this season. Um, I'll give it. I'll give this to it, even though I d don't particularly like it. Uh, Ahura no Sora is in there. Mm. Uh, but as you said, uh, it's also... <laughs> It's also the uh, the magazine that had Seven Deadly Sins, uh, Fairy Tale. It has Mashima's follow up series Eden Zero. Uh, it's Actually. had had or has. I'm not sure if it's finished yet. Fire Force. Fire Force is still ongoing, but it's in its final arc. Uh, has rent a girlfriend. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see what it's had in the past. That's that's just what's running in it currently. Um, oh, that's right. The fucking Seven Deadly Sins sequel manga. Because everyone was asking for that. Why? Everyone was asking for that. I'll tell you what I'm looking for. Um, oh, what was the fucking name of the, uh, the series that you hate, Jack, because of the coma ending? Domestic girlfriend. Domestic girlfriend. I wanna. What magazine was that in? I wonder. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm find it. I'm not exactly enthusiastic to look it up. So. I am, because I'm curious. I'm just curious about. Yes, it was in Weekly Shonen Magazine. <laughs> no fucking damn it. <laughs> and people wonder why Kadansha isn't taken as seriously as Shueisha. <laughs> Um, we've sort of gotten off topic there, but, um, Fire Force, um, what was its first arc about? That was... The first actual, like, continuous story arc instead of episodic stuff was the Company 5 arc. That's right, yeah. So it was, it was, um, very much episodic before that, and I, I don't think that the episodic parts were actually that bad, because, what was it? It was the first fight... Um, for Shinra, which was I felt like it was a good introduction for Shinra. Then we got the introduction mm -hmm. of Arthur, which again I I thought that was a very good arc in um in the, the anime. What, in the anime, well, yeah, I'm talking about the anime. I haven't read the uh, read the manga for it, but the anime. Um, I'm just remembering exactly because obviously we got Arthur, our uh, wonderfully challenged boy uh he's such, a, he's such a fucking idiot um but we also you know got a serious side of him and um you know shinra getting more showing more trust in obi and then we unfortunately had the, the introduction of tamaki god so that was that, that was still a good arc because we got Shinra versus Joker, which was a really fucking good fight. It was. You know, though, with Fire Force, there's also the fact that, like, um, like Hunter x Hunter, it is the second major series by mm. uh, its author. Okubo, yeah. Yeah, Okubo also wrote Soul Eater. 
which is an also an example of early shonen syndrome to be mm. honest yeah i i've read the um first volume of it and it was not especially uh engrossing again the only reason i'm interested in soul leader i think i said this when we were um <laughs> we were playing uh anime villainous the other day the other reason i'm interested in uh soul leader is because of the scythes i just i'm a fucking fanboy for scythes i don't blame you <laughs> honestly soul leader has um Oh, there is one thing I should warn you. The the anime diverges from the manga, and I think it's for the worse. I mean, I it's not like I can, like, fucking watch the anime uh, legally anyway. <laughs> Ooh, that's rough. <laughs> it's genuinely not anywhere. Oh, it, the uh, Weekly Shonen Magazine had Cromarty. Good for it. Cromarty was fun. Cromarty? Cromarty High School. Mm, wow. Basically a fucking parody of, uh, like, delinquent high school. No, I, I'm familiar with it. It's... I just never got into one. I've not watched much of it, but I've watched enough of it to know that it's fucking insane. It's fucking got, uh, <laughs> a Freddie Mercury XP, uh, and, uh, Mechamaru. <laughs> Mechazawa. Mm. Mechazawa, sorry. Uh, Makazawa, that's what it is. Your, 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 your brain rot on Jujutsu Kaisen is yeah. showing. Uh, Shinichi Mekazawa, one of the most notorious delinquents. God damn it. <laughs> He's just a fucking robot, but nobody but the main characters realize. <sighs> God damn. Uh, have you read um, Mashima's first series, Rave Master? I have not. I've seen isolated episodes of the anime, but I have not mm. read or watched the series as a whole. Because again, because that that makes what you were saying about fairy tale all the more interesting. Because that means that Mashima is again another, uh, another author that has had a previous successful series. It went for six years. Did Rave Master? Um, yeah. Before I think moving fairy on to tale fairy tale. Went to I think Fairy Tale went on for about nine years, or thereabouts. Fairy Tale, eleven no, years, eleven. Oh. Jesus Christ, they let that go on eleven years. The other thing with Fairy Tale, though, is um, that has a sequel series as well. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we haven't discussed the sequel series, mostly because neither of us have actually read most of them. Because obviously you've got the fairy tale one, but the big ones at the moment are obviously uh, Bolt and uh, Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, no, I think Kaido's read Super, but um... I mean, I know, I, it. I know a little bit. Well. I can't say for sure whether this happened in the manga or not, but certainly Super, Super the anime, um, struggled because it just did anime versions of the, uh, of Battle of Gods and Resurrection F arcs, or movies, sorry. Pretty sure the, the manga skipped that. Very possibly. As I said, I have not read the manga, because I was saving it until sure, I got, I. until I actually read, uh, the Z manga, and then I sort of... Well, <laughs> okay. So I was holding off on Super until I finished Z, and then I finished, hold, held off on reading uh, the Boo Saga because I wanted to see what TFS did with it, and then TFS hasn't done anything with it. <laughs> Most unfortunate. And, you know, fair enough to them, their choice. I'm, you know, I'm not going to complain. I... What what we blame them. what we're getting from them is good enough anyway, so uh, I don't really mind. But yeah, so yeah, that hero Aka in five minutes there was funny as hell. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, again, I don't know what Bort did. Um, I'm fairly sure in the anime they rehashed a movie. Um, they did, to my knowledge. Yeah. So again, anime for both of those not great starts. Interestingly. Uh, I do know that um. 
I don't think the sequel to Fairy Tale has gotten an anime, but it's the manga, from what I remember, just jumps off straight from the end of the original. Fairy Tale: A Hundred Years Quest is the sequel. Yes. No. I remember is... reading like a dozen or two chapters of yeah. uh, of that series. It's not hard for it to be better than the original fairy tale, but it is. <laughs> but that's damning it with faint praise. Hmm. Uh, I've heard the same thing about Eden Zero, but I haven't read Eden Zero past the pilot chapter. I mean, uh, 100 Years Quest is interesting in that it, it is written by Mashima, but not illustrated by him. Yeah, well, he's also illust he's already illustrating uh, Eden Zero, so... Mm. Trying to illustrate two weekly series would probably be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, like, I only know one other author who's... Uh, also, 100 Years Quest is bi-weekly. Hmm. Yeah, the only the only all the only manga artist that I could see being able to uh, to write and illustrate uh, two weekly series. I'm going to assume that you were going to say the same as me, Oda. Oda probably could do it, but he'd be killing himself to do so. <laughs> you say that like Oda's not immortal. <laughs> mm. Araki is the mortal one, the immortal one. Remember? Mm. Oh yeah. To be fair, Araki has slowed down a lot. Yeah, there is one author I know of who is doing two weekly series, but uh, he's he's only doing writer illustrator duties on one. The other one, he's just the writer on. Which and that's is the author of Kaguya-sama, Akasaka. Ah. Aka. So. Oops. Uh, the other series he's working on is um, Oshinoko, which is a very good series. But yeah, we're getting off topic a little bit. Yes. I, those um, both were in the same magazine, and they're both seinen. Ah. So, so not the topic of our discussion. What is the topic of our discussion, which we haven't mentioned yet, um, and we because we were talking about um, artists who have um, appeared who have written a series and then appeared again, uh, Assassination Classroom. Hmm, yes. I'd argue that that has a very is... good start. Yeah, no, I think Assassination Classroom is one of a handful of exceptions to this rule mm. of the of Shonen series have a, having a weak start. Because I, it's a very strong start. I mean, the first... I believe it's the first chapter... Um, of you know just introducing Koro Sensei and then obviously Koro Sensei getting his name but also very much introducing you know the key struggle for Nagisa yeah um but even then i would say that it there is a point where where as i said i love the start of assassination classroom and it it enthralled me immediately but where Assassination Classroom does really pick up is when Karma comes back. Mm. When Karma comes back Karma's to class. Karma great. Because, mm. again, before that, pretty much all of the... Aside from Tarasuka and his gang, all of the uh, students were very nice about uh, trying to kill Koro-sensei. Then mm. you got Karma coming in, who is really is just a fucking maniac more than anything else and does great. and is both you know super intelligent um and willing to do what it takes i mean the the man jumped off a cliff for fuck's sake yeah there's also the thing that like the pilot chapter for assassination classroom is a very good chapter mm. on its own like Having a good pilot chapter is extremely important, and a lot of the series on this list do have good pilot chapters, but the arcs following off of those chapters are a lot weaker than mm. what than the pilot or the subsequent arcs. Because that's the thing, I'm I'm fairly sure this I'm basically I'm fairly sure I'm basing this off uh, what I read in Barkaman, but uh, the the pilot chapters, the first chapters, are almost always the the one shot chapters that they wrote to get it published in the first place yeah and therefore you know in most cases they have a lot of time to work on the pilot chapters compared mm. to subsequent chapters yes 
four game things. Pilot chapters also tend to be pretty standalone. Mm. At, a lot like a pilot episode of a procedural. Yes. I mean, there, there are definitely yeah. some um, some exceptions to that. I mean, because I mean, think about uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's uh, publication history. The reason Jujutsu Kaisen got made is because Akatami uh, made what is now considered Volume Zero, and that got such a good response that uh, Shonen Jump asked slash told him to uh, to make a series on that concept. Mm-hmm. And thus we got Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for traumatizing us, Akutami. <laughs> We're yeah. going to have to talk about that arc when that we talk at some point in the future. We will. Um, when is the Jujutsu Kaisen episode scheduled? Uh, oh, two weeks. We are doing... Two weeks. Yeah. We're only talking about the anime stuff in mm. two weeks, which is not the, the arc I was referring to earlier. Oh, I'm fully aware of the arc that you were referring to. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Anyways. But, yeah, no. A lot of early Shonen stuff is just... Um... Oh, you know what? We didn't talk about Bleach. I haven't read Bleach, so you go ahead with that. Yeah, so Bleach's the first arc is much more episodic. It's basically just Ichigo and uh, Rukia and friends uh, solving supernatural cases in their hometown. Mm -hmm. And then the Soul Society arc starts, and that's the best arc of Bleach. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's downhill after that. But that's, Soul Society that's not is a really good arc. It's not great, is Soul it? Society... Ah. Ah. Soul Society is a really good arc. Hmm. Like, one of the better shonen arcs overall, I'd say. But it also falls off of a fairly... Um... The introductory arc isn't bad by any stretch, but it, it's just kind of in the shadow of Soul Society, which introduced a huge cast of new and interesting characters. Hmm. And... Uh kind of uh, did a good job of illustrating the power scaling of the series for the most part before later arcs broke that. Yeah. And also just had some really good character dynamics between both the new cast, um, both amongst the new cast members and between them and the old cast members. Mm. So having that follow off of the uh, introductory arc was uh, it worked really well for Kubo mm. and uh, unfortunately what followed was basically a rehash of Soul Society <laughs> except longer and less interesting mm. because the antagonists were less interesting but we can talk about that late at another date in detail um, so there is still a couple of series I would say that we haven't uh, really talked about. One is Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer also has the early Shonen Syndrome, I'd say. It definitely it does. Doesn't really start, it doesn't really start getting good up until the Mount Nadagumo arc, at, which is towards the end of the first season. Oh, that far in you you uh, you're saying? Interesting. Um, oh no, it starts getting good earlier, but I, but it starts getting really good with Mount Nagumo. I mean, my, what I was what I was gonna say, and you know, thinking, hmm, this is <laughs> this feels really late cons compared to some of the other series that we've been talking about, was the introduction of Zenitsu and Inosuke. Um, yeah, that would all also be a good uh, example because again That's i've about... i've i've said this uh while talking about demon slayer before i like tanjiro as a protagonist he doesn't do well on his own having zanitsu and inosuke to bounce off of mm. definitely helps yeah no, he, he does a lot better bouncing off those two i mean just um just 
being introduced as an Itsu and that fucking disgusted face, that's more like character, I would say, than Tanjiro shows prior to that. Uh, I would say it's more character. I think it's just a different side of him than we've seen before. And it adds interesting mm. layers to him. Yeah. Compared to before where he was just a nice dude who cares a lot about his family and mm. is sad that most of them are dead. Yeah. Actually, yeah. No, that's that's not fair because he did show character. Um, but again, this is, this is him playing off of other characters um, in the... Uh, I don't actually know what the arc is called, but when he's in... Uh, in the city and meeting with the two good demons mm. and when uh the uh sundere dude like <laughs> calls nesco ugly and tanjiro just goes on a massive rant about how she <laughs> she was the beauty of their village yeah no that was funny him, him and interacting with the Ushiro is really funny in mm. that arc that arc does start to pick things up, but like you said, the introduction of Zenitsu and Inosuke mm. is when the series starts getting good. Yeah. Like, my one issue with that arc is it also, like, really kick-started the trend of demons having tragic backstories revealed as they're dying. Oh, yeah, that's the worst part of Demon Slayer, by far. Like, if you're gonna have a character have a tragic backstory, maybe do it a little bit before they're about to die and that hey, we go into the fight knowing what their business is and hey not every character needs a tragic backstory that takes like half a dozen chapters for the love of god <laughs> please hey, stop at least there's one major demon who does there's a couple major demons who don't have that going on but that's uh spoilers well i'm gonna assume one of them is fucking uh muzan <laughs> like is Muzan, and that one is uh, Enmu. Which one is Enmu? Lower one. Is he the one in uh, the Mugen train? Yes, he is. Yeah. He doesn't, we don't see any tragic backstory for him. Fair enough. That is the most spoiler you're going to get for that movie, by the way, on mm. this episode. Yeah. I haven't even watched it yet, because I'm not braving, braving theaters yet. <laughs> well, you have read the manga, so you already know this stuff. Yeah, I already know what the fuck happens. Um, Trying to think of any other big series that we have missed, we haven't talked about yet. Hmm. I mean, w oh, what we haven't talked about talk is, is um, the more... We've very much been focused on the more um, action series. Uh... Again, yeah. this is this well, is more thing... aimed towards you. We never learn Nisekoi, two fairly long series. Those also had weak starts. Yeah, mm. I certainly remember We Never Learns because that's what killed it for me. <laughs> yeah, that had a weak start. We Never Learn got a bit better as it went on and fleshed out the cast. Mm. Uh, I won't call it like a groundbreaking, amazing achievement in in anime or manga or anything of the sort. Yeah, but it's still fairly enjoyable for what it is. Mm. But it does take a bit to get going. Like I think after the introduction of Asami, it starts to pick up quite a bit. Mm. And uh, we did not get that far in FMK. No, we did not because I Fuzzy and I fucking hated it. <laughs> I mean, I know Fuzzy hates harems with a burning passion, mm. so that was his end. I just did not find any of the characters. I was about to say any of the girls, but let's be real. Main boy wasn't that interesting either. <laughs> hey, he was still better than the main protagonist of Isekoi. Is that saying much? I don't know. That is fair. <laughs> No, wh when I when I when I say I don't don't know, I genuinely don't know. Nisko is also one I've not touched. I don't blame you. <laughs> Again, I've one been warned away from it. One of our friends hate us for ragging on Nisko, but uh, Nisko is not that great, and um, the the beginning doesn't help because the our introduction to uh, the main two characters is quite possibly is not a really flattering introduction. Hmm. Like, 
they're both kind of assholes to each other at the start, which does not help. Yeah. Especially since the conceit of the series is, uh, oh, these two have to fake that they're in a relationship with each other. Lol. <laughs> um, so, I've got two series left that I want to mention. One seriously and one not. Uh, Astro Lost in Space is definitely an example of early Shonen Syndrome. Because those first, certainly in the anime and uh, in the manga as well, those first three worlds where basically the same thing happens but with a different uh, Quest. different focus character, um, it just got boring. But once it was revealed that uh, Luca was intersex, that's when it really, really starts to pick up. And becomes an actually fairly decent series, I felt, reading the manga. It helps that that's when a lot of the plot twists start actually um, mm. unveiling themselves yeah. as well. No, like I... Before that, there was only a vague sense of mystery. Yeah. Uh, but afterwards, uh, the plot twists start piling up. No, cause I, I, I can definitely say that I ended up enjoying my time with, uh, with Astra by the end of it. The less serious example I was going to bring up, and again, this is because I'm currently looking through the shonen manga category on Wikipedia just for ideas, and some of them are obviously definitely what one would consider shonen. Some of them are not. Let's talk about Review Starlight, which is apparently classed oh as God. fucking shonen for some reason. <laughs> I would actually say that has a good start. Yeah, no. Especially because of the first episode it has, like, the all first... these compelling things brought up. The first episode is genuinely interesting, because you don't know what the fuck is going on. You come into it expecting it to be a series about uh, girls in the theatre, and then it becomes this fucking battle series. <laughs> like, good for a review Starlight. Good for a review Starlight on its start. It possibly didn't manage to keep that start going uh which is you know a topic for debate uh among a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, and one we will probably have to discuss at some point if we can get people on uh <laughs> that'll be a that'll that be a heated fun fucking episode i can tell you now <laughs> oh that'd be heated <laughs> gonna be fucking hilarious if i'm not part if i'm not like uh part of the actual uh debate i'm just gonna be sat back just watching it all fall apart Ooh, another series that i d didn't think we mentioned was magi no we haven't we haven't talked about magi um i'm i'm as you know jack i am planning to watch magi at some point so i haven't watched it just I'll yet keep... i will keep uh i will not elaborate on that then but i will say like the start is also kind of weak on moggy until it gets the swing of things a few episodes in mm. well these again i'm this is series well series that we have um we have both watched um oh spyx family spyx family well that's not the one i was going to bring up but yes that is a that's a good one that i believe was to i think it's a good counter example honestly Yes, no, I, I do think that the start of Spike's family is very good. Um, I'm just trying to think if it's if it could be considered more episodic than anything else. Um, it does eventually get to a point where it's uh, less episodic and more mm. more um... more arc based. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I would I would definitely agree that Spike's family is a uh, example of a shonen, of a sort of shonen uh, that's avoided uh, early shonen syndrome. Mm -hmm. In that it's just a, it's just a very refreshing um, concept, I would say. Like, let's be real. After a certain point, a lot of shonen starts are very similar. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, but Spy and his family, you know, fucking uh, super spy uh, has to uh, pretend to be in a relationship with a super assassin and be parents to a uh, to a psychic. That's a 
fucking interesting uh, concept. Mm-hmm. Now, the the ones that I was going to mention, um, again, as is, is bad examples, um, mostly in the anime. I can't say for the manga, and apparently the animes changed the start um, from what the manga did, to the Abandoned Sacred Beasts and the Vinland Saga. Mm. Best will in the world, uh, well, in general, to the Abandoned Sacred Beasts is fairly dull, but uh, the first episode especially was not the best, let's be real. Mm. Actually, I'm trying to remember whether the first episode was... The first episode, I don't think, was bad, because that was the one that was the history, wasn't it? Uh, it was the, the flashback episode, yeah. yeah. The flashback episode itself wasn't bad. It was when they got to the present day that it wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But then again, that was just sort of to the abandoned Sacred Beasts. Uh, Vinland Saga, much more clear-cut. Starting with the flashback, uh, did not work. Nah. Honestly, like, I read the manga introduction, the first volume mm. of the manga, and, uh, it, it works a lot better. Wait, is Vinland yeah. Saga a fucking shonen? Uh, it's apparently it's classed as shonen. It's classed as shonen and seinen for some reason. What the fuck? It started off in Weekly Shonen Magazine. So I'm counting it as sh I'm counting the start as shonen, okay? <laughs> I'm taking this. <laughs> As I said, this is just based on what fucking Wikipedia thinks. Well, this is based on what has the shonen tag on its page. And a, st a staggering amount has the shonen tag, when it probably shouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, Vinland Saga, by starting with the flashback, and, you know, getting to know Thors, who was a very good protagonist... But then he died, and we were left with his fairly whiny son. Who had left a horrifically bad impression in his time on screen during that flashback. Uh, yeah, it didn't go well. It did not go well at all. It just took, no, it did not. It just took so long to get to teenage uh, Thorfinn. Who, you know, was vaguely interesting. More interesting than Kid Thorfinn was. For sure. Yep. So we've talked um, for about an hour and 20 on um, series that we think had good starts and bad starts. For this last sort of 40 minutes, let's try and come up with, you know, what we think makes a good start and what makes a bad start. In general, obviously, we can't we can't go into specifics on you know series. I mean, maybe if we maybe if we have some time, we can talk about some of the uh, bad starts and how we would try and uh, make the starts a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so what makes uh, what makes a prime example of early shonen syndrome? Hmm. Probably, if I were to pin it on any uh, any handful of factors, I'd say combination of weak character writing or um, combination of weak character writing, pacing, and uh, a lot of info dumps are also a problem mm. in uh, in early arcs of shonen. Because that a was lot of it is. Uh, that was very much the issue for um, Kishimoto's second series, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Far too many info dumps. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, for me, um, I do agree with everything you've said. I'm just trying to think of sort of more specifics for that in terms of, certainly in terms of weak character writing i mean i'm just trying to think of the ex of the bad examples that we have um brought up 
uh, to probably the surprise of none, certainly none that know me, uh, Naruto is the one that keeps popping up in my mind. Uh, what I would say, again, it's... Other than Naruto, um, Naruto and really Sasuke, none of the other characters in that first arc really got that much attention. I mean, for Sakura, it was basically starting as you intended to go off, because Sakura never really got that 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 necessary attention to become a proper character. Uh, but um, I'm just trying to think, Naruto. He just wasn't at all likable in that first arc. He was very much an, a, a dick who just was jealous of Sasuke for something that wasn't in... wasn't, to be fair, in Naruto's control, but also, like, what the fuck is Sasuke supposed to do? Dumb himself down to make Naruto feel better? Uh, and obviously, again, like, Kakashi was just sort of there? He didn't really do all that much. Are you still there, Jack? Well, we may have lost Jack. Uh, in terms of pacing, um, well, I'm trying to remember which order I did it first, because I, I know I did actually watch the anime for that first arc and found it lacking to say the least um but again that's that was just how big shonen series were made back in the day uh they were very poorly paced because they they weren't seasonal seasonal was not as much of a thing back then certainly for a big series it was only no. until it was only until, um, what would we say, My Hero, uh, that big seasonal, big shonen seasonal series started. I think I think My Hero was the uh, series that popularized it. Yeah. I don't know if it was the first. I think other series might have come before it mm. that did it, but Hero I, was probably I, the one yeah. that popularized that approach. Yeah, I def I do think that My Hero was the one that you know made people realize that it w that was a very sustainable idea um and probably a better idea in general um, oh yeah no. but yeah so i did you did i cut out for you at some point jack or what yeah no discord cut out for me yeah so what what i was basically saying is that uh in terms of characters sakura started as uh kishimoto intended to go on with her in that you know she was just sort of there <laughs> she was there to make up numbers um kakashi was I and mean, he was just the general sort of mentor figure with no real um no real impetus i would say and then you have fucking Naruto is just jealous of Sasuke pretty much that entire arc. Mm -hmm. And again, he does get character development in the arc in because, you know, fucking Sasuke attempts to sacrifice his life for Naruto, which again was a sign of the uh, sign of the poor writing uh, in their relationship, let's be real. Because why the fuck mm -hmm. would why the fuck would Sasuke at that point sacrifice his life for Naruto? <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, but yeah, as I said, in terms of pacing, the anime was poor. I can't exactly remember for the uh, manga. Because I never actually went back to it in the manga. If I ever reread Naruto, it was always from the tuning exam. <laughs> I don't blame you. The tuning exam is a good arc. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and again, as I said, I'm just trying to think of um, anything else aside from the stuff that you mentioned that makes a makes a bad start to a shonen. Um, 
just trying to think of other ex- again i'm just trying to think of other examples than naruto uh i mean there's also the signs that a series is growing past its early growing pains like um a de- decrease in the worst el- worst elements of the early arcs mm. for example in like um um what's a good example Oh, Rosario plus Vampire is a pretty good example in that, like, early on, the earlier the earlier content overall has a lot more fan service and um, mm. a lot more get is a lot more comedic. But yeah. as it goes on, it gets more serious and the fan service kind of dies down substantially. Yeah, which helps the tone and uh, story to be a lot better. Yeah. So um, that that's one example. Yeah. And again, I'm j- I'm just trying to think. Um, so for Doctor Stone, um, yeah. Doctor Stone is a very is actually a um, a weirder example the most because it it a- did actually just basically chuck aside uh, its entire supporting cast and introduce a new one. It very, mm-hmm. much, it very much did not go the usual shonen route of, you know, maybe just try to make the supporting cast better. It just decided to discard them until the series was more established to handle the original supporting cast again. But that's yeah. that's a perfectly valid perfectly valid strategy if you can get away with it. <laughs> it is, and it uh, worked out in the end, didn't it? Yeah, because again, like. Um, as I said at the start, a lot of shonen, you know, experiment with characters and introduce new ones when uh, the original characters don't seem to be working out. So yeah, that is very much a very much a point. You know, not just lacking characters, but lacking dynamics between the characters. Hmm. Um. Because again, that that was Doctor Stone's big issue. Is that uh, on their own? It just wasn't a very good, uh, very good dynamic. Um, to an extent, Demon Slayer. Um, you know, Gotoge. I hope realized that you know, it couldn't just be Tanjiro and Nezuko on their own. There needed to be. Because Nez, because he refused to let ne- or they refused to let Nezuko speak, uh, that gave no one for Tanjiro to play off of. Um, yeah, and having a supporting cast just really helps a lot. And I with uh, giving yeah. Tanjiro more to do. And again, I I obviously don't know because I've. <laughs> I've not read any interviews about this, or have never talked to Gotoge to uh, to confirm this. But my instinct is probably that um, in those first few arcs, up until you know Anosuke and Zenitsu are introduced, it was probably um, Gotoge experimenting with different character archetypes to see which ones played best with Tanjiro. Because that's mm-hmm. the thing you get you get a lot of. Um, short-lived supporting characters in between the start of Demon Slayer and Inosuke and Sunitsu getting introduced, because you get... What was it? Um, I Obviously, Gyu was never going to stick around. He was too, too OP. Um, but... Oh, definitely. Uh, to an extent, I would probably say Orokodani. Orokodaki, yeah. Orokodaki, sorry. I knew it was Oroku something. <laughs> um, probably the the people... Well, then the two uh, two magic ghosts that Tanjiro trains with. I don't remember their names. <laughs> uh, Sabito and Mokumo. Those two, yes. Again, I'm not saying that necessarily they would have stuck around with Tanjiro, because, you know, they were ghosts, but it was about experimenting with the, with the archetypes um, and seeing which ones responded to well, and then, you know, if one played out well with the audience, you can introduce a new character with that archetype 
to then work with. Um, so what else was there? Uh, you said pacing as well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've we talked about um, Black Clover's pacing. Um, I would say that my hero is also an example of that in that. Uh, actually, no, to a lesser extent, because um, it got to the end of its um, the end of USJ in around the third volume, didn't it? If I remember correctly, looking at the covers at the very least. That tracks. Uh, it's either the end of the third or end of the fourth volume. But to an extent, I, like only... I mean, we, we, we said that the end of USJ was where My Hero picked up. I think it could be argued that it was Deku versus Bakugo where My Hero really picked up. Like the first time? Yeah, the first one. Hmm. Uh, cause, I mean, that was, that was the first fight proper that we really saw in, uh, in My Hero. Before that, it had been, uh, All Might Curb Stomps, or, uh, well, the only other fight we'd seen before that was, what, uh, Deku in the entrance exam, which wasn't a fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we really got to see, you know... Deku's mind at work and his relationship with Bakugo and just Bakugo actually getting, you know, some screen time to be more than a dick. <laughs> Careful. Fuzzy might hear you. When we talk, we're gonna probably going to have to set aside a whole fucking podcast to talk about Bakugo. But I don't think even, well, no, the most further Bak Bakugo defenders will not accept that he's been anything but a saint. But even somebody like me, who is more tolerant of Bakugo than, uh, than some people we know, like Fuzzy or Gen, would say that mm -hmm. Bakugo is a dick pretty much all the way up to the final exam. Final exam yep. is where he actually starts to get development. Mm -hmm. Before that, he's a dick. <laughs> I'm not even gonna, like, I'm not sugarcoating that. Correct. He's a fucking dick. <laughs> um, what else is there? What, so you said, um, lacking characters, pacing, and one more thing? Fuck, I forgot what it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, info dumps. Info dumps, that's it, yes, info dumps. Um, yes, the best series find ways to do info dumps naturally. Um, I don't remember the starts of a lot of series enough to really comment on how well they did info dumps. As I said, I for the most of the bad ones, I just sort of ignore them and skip to uh, skip to the good part um, but to give an example of a series I think did info dumps quite well um, Jujutsu Kaisen I think Jujutsu Kaisen's info dumps were fairly well done um, and didn't take away from the story uh, from what I recall anyway I mean, they did a they did the very clever thing uh, in general info dumps of uh, oh there are some techniques that if you reveal them they get stronger which gives us an excuse to explain them. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> okay, good. I was just about to say I believe Jack is cut out again. <laughs> nope, I'm back. Discord just hates me. Mm. Um, so yeah, so we've, we've discussed what makes a what makes uh, a bad early Shonen Syndrome. What makes a good one then? 
having well basically the opposite of what we <laughs> described uh but in addition to that just having a good sense of um what to introduce and when to introduce it mm. like having it paced out well and um knowing what to leave in the background and knowing what to have be prominent mm. at the start I mean, my, my example of that would be Black Clover. Because obviously it does introduce you to the entirety of the Black Bulls. But other than that, those first couple of introduction chapters, after that, the focus very much starts to... Um, it shifts members. Obviously, Asta and Noel as the main characters, and you know to a lesser extent, are there. But, you know, it keep swapping um the um members of the bulls that are with them so in saucy village it's magna when they go into the dungeon it's luck mm -hmm. and having that arc based approach to character focus was really mm. a good idea yeah honestly it worked out for the better like or yeah, having the characters be focused on in individual arcs really worked out. Mm. And I wish more Shonen series did that with their supporting cast. Yeah. I'm, you, you can't see me right now, but I'm uh, giving a side eye to Horikoshi right now. Horikoshi's... Horikoshi's um, well, to, approach to uh, his characters is not the best. Should not have given Class A 20 people in it. Should not have then added Class B with another 20 people for him to basically ignore most of the time. The thing is, you could cut out, like, at least five characters from Class A and still have a good cast to work with. Yeah. Like, we don't need Mineta. <laughs> I, I like the rest of the cast. Funny cast just fine, but a lot of them are really generic. Let's like, see. Mineta... The entire joke about him is that he is generic yeah let's see uh mineta uh ojiro sato hagakure who else who would you... i would keep hagakure if only because other because there are so few girls in the class i know other than those like... other than those three because i don't want to get rid of koda because he's a sweet boy that is nice and I don't want to get rid of I would have gotten rid of if it wasn't for the fact that he gets better later on. If it wasn't for the threatening messages and cheese, yes. Yes. <laughs> and Shoji I like a lot because he has a neat, freaky character design. Shoji Honestly, is Shoji is a very interesting character that deserves more time. I really liked that he got more got attention in the uh, second My Hero movie. Like I said, if Poor Kochi could focus more on the in could have focused more on the individual members of one A or even just a few at a time. Like he did that with Ida and Todoroki in mm. in different arcs fairly early on. The tournament was focused a lot on Todoroki and the Stain arc focused heavily on Ida. Mm. If he had done that with more of class one A, or even just given them joint focus, that would have been great. Mm. You know? Yeah. Oh no, I I absolutely agree. Um, because what is because the arc after um, because the arc after Stain goes to the final exam, which is focused so heavily on Deku and Bakugo, which is fine, because Bakugo very much needed to kickstart needed that to kickstart his character development, but then we get to the. Uh, training camp arc and the issue is is that there is there are 40 fucking students there <laughs> fortunately the only class b characters we get that get any focus are um kendo and tetsu tetsu mm. uh so that does mitigate their focus a little bit awase gets a little bit um but yes it's mostly just kendo and Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu Tetsu, which never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> it's such it a dumb mute. fucking name. It's such a dumb fucking name. I want to know how many drugs that mother was on. Uh... 
all of the drugs. Um, but I mean, yeah. Other other than that's the thing. Out of class B, the only characters to get consistent screen time, and even then, it's not a lot. It's Monoma, Kendo, and Tetsu Tetsu. It's not until the joint training arc that the uh, anime is currently covering they get any real attention. Uh, but we are getting onto the subject, getting too much onto the middle of my hero, which is. I missed a bit of that. We're getting too much onto the uh, middle, which is more a uh, more a topic for the Shonen Escalation Problem, which is the sequel to this podcast. Oh yes, we'll get into that in a, little, in a few months, probably. You know, how long it takes for uh, a given series to actually get through a fucking arc. <laughs> um, so again, I'm just trying to think of the good series that uh i would think of i mean the series that um i haven't talked about yet um which has very quickly become one of my favorites um is haikyuu mm, yeah. um you did mention it briefly earlier. i did mention it briefly earlier in uh the fact that it introduced yachi but again that was very late on that was probably close to 100 chapters um, in um, but the initial start I think is actually very good because the first chapter which is uh, Hinata and Kageyama facing each other in middle school you know introduces both of those characters and the battles that they will have to uh, fight in the coming coming you know 400 chapters basically uh <laughs> In the you know, Hinata is tiny in a sport where height wins, and Kageyama's got the social skills of a particularly disgusting snail. Uh, but then it, it introduces um, only part of the Karasuno team, which again is very interesting, because it introduces, let's see, uh, Daichi... Uh, Suga and Tanaka uh, so again it doesn't overload the characters that you're introduced to early on then it introduces uh, Tsukishima and Yamaguchi and it's only sort of after that point um, after the first match against uh, the practice match against Seijo that you get introduced to characters like uh, Asahi, Nishinoya and uh, Ukai Mm. So I think that's I think that's what I would say Haikyuu does very well. It it spaces out its character introductions very well. Um so that you you know you're not overloaded by character names that you have to learn the way you are in um My Hero or I know we've used it as a good example prior, but Assassination Classroom gives you something like 25 names to learn off the bat, which is fucking hard. Uh, On the plus side, you, don't, you aren't expected to lo know all of them right away. Mm. No, you aren't. You aren't. And I still say I could probably get most of uh, Class uh, 3E. Think I could. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't overload you. Um, but it also, you know, doesn't let characters sit um, and doesn't focus too heavily on uh, the existing characters the way, uh, let's say, uh, Demon Slayer or Naruto does. Because mm. it introduces yeah. it introduces the main cast and then you stick with them for so long that you're just like, can we have some new characters, please? Yep. At least Naruto tried to do that. Didn't do it well, but it tried. Well, the issue with Naruto is that the characters it introduced were so much more interesting than its main cast. Yeah. <laughs> that was the issue true. with Naruto. <laughs> and suddenly Kishimoto was stuck in a fucking hole of, oh god, the side characters have created are more interesting than my main cast. What the fuck do I do? 
Honestly, if he had just made the series about Shikamaru, I would have I would love that shit. I would have as well. Shikamaru was great. Why why can't we get a fucking bromance story about Shikamaru and Choji, eh? <laughs> that would have been great. Honestly, like Maybe... Choji trying to be the wing of Shikamaru would also be funny as hell yeah. to watch. Maybe replace Eno with somebody else, because let's be real, she was even less interesting than Sakura. Uh which Takes some doing. Let's be let's be truly honest about that. Oh yeah. But then again, that's pretty much just Kishimoto's uh, strategy with female characters, because Sakura, well, they're either like Sakura and Ino, who are so uh, boy obsessed that to the point of uselessness, um, or. What was the name of the uh, of the female shinobi who ended up just pregnant and then never appeared in the story again? Oh, um, Kurenai, right? Kurenai, yeah. She was interesting. And then she got shelved because of pregnancy. Uh, yeah. Tsunade, and the... fairly interesting, had a good story, got shelved. Yeah, no, I don't think... Kishimoto is just remotely good at handling female characters. Mm. I think, mean, to be fair, Horikoshi. I was about to say that Horikoshi's pretty good, but no, he's not that much better. He's better for sure, but uh, that's not a high bar. It's not a high bar, unfortunately. Please just give us some more time with Uraraka, or Yaoyorozu, or Jiro. Fuck it, I'll you even know... take Agakure and Mina at this point. <laughs> Mina is nice, and I want her to get more focused, too, because she has a neat power. Yeah. But no. Did I miss, miss any girls out in... Go hours. Did I miss any girls out in class, uh, class 1A? Or is it just those five? Oh, Sue. That's right, yeah. How did you forget Sue you? Because I'm not a fucking simp for her the way the rest of the world is. <laughs> Boo. I like her, but I don't love her. Boo. <laughs> but again, like, I know we're getting off topic again, but as we've said many times before, it's essentially our brand. It is quite frustrating that um, out of the big three, the one that doesn't get focus is the female one. As much as I both, as much as I love Mirio and Tamaki, the only one out of those three that didn't really get any focus was Nejere. She does get some focus later on, but I can't say anymore without spoiling things. That's good, at least. I'm glad about that. Yeah, she gets a uh, some cool scenes in the spotlight during the climax of the arc you're on. Yeah. But in fairness, this is not just like um, it's not just an issue of the of these sole authors. It's it's more a systemic problem in manga because out of the series that we have mentioned today, how many of them have strong, involved female characters that aren't obsessed with boys? Uh, you got Jujutsu Kaisen. You got Jujutsu. You got, you got Jujutsu Kaisen and Nobara. You've got, uh... You got One Piece with Robin and Nami. That's because Oda appear appears. I'm not going to say he said he's not going to do it, because uh, there's no actual proof that that quote is real. But it appears that he's not going to do any proper romance for the main, main uh, crew. I mean, by all indications, he doesn't seem to be interested in writing that kind of stuff for the main cast. And good for him, because if more if more authors were like that, then uh, the manga that we read would be a lot better. Mm. Black Clover is a kind of sort of example, but uh, there is also the issue of like. Yes, yes, you're... Noel and characters like Mimosa are uh, fairly obsessed with Asta, but in fairness, it's you also for have the Mary better. Leona. Yeah, you've also got fucking Mary Leona, who is probably the greatest female shonen character uh, created so far. Just because of how fucking she's, feral she's she is. She's very high up there. <laughs> she's amazing. 
I would say Nobara pushes her close, <laughs> but I have to give it to Merileona just for how fucking savage she gets in the uh, assault on uh, the... Oh, what the fuck are they called? I of the Midnight Sun, that's it. Mm -hmm. I of the Midnight Sun base. Um, World Trigger has a lot of really good female characters and really strong female characters. And it's another series that doesn't seem overly concerned with any sort of romance, which is really nice. Um, mm. You know what else has good female characters? Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. Uh, you know, talking about badass shonen characters, fucking Armstrong. Olivier Mirror Armstrong is yeah. fucking amazing. Oh god, I can still can't get over how much she fucking kicked the shit out of Alex. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite scenes in the series. Just, and, just, and just the rest of the fucking family just going, well, have fun you two, we're gonna go on holiday. <laughs> It's, that's just great. Um, Promise Neverland's manga. I will preface that sp specifically for the manga, because Emma is a fantastic female female lead at that. Not just character, but lead. Yeah, I think it's one of the few major shonen series that has a female lead character, uh, female protagonist. Twin Star Exorcist is another one. I do. Benio is a really good female lead. Isn't she a co-protagonist, though? She is a co-protagonist, to be fair. And Rokuro does get more of the spotlight, I would say. But I More of the Deuteron, then. Yeah. But I would still say that Benio is a, is a significant main character and does get a uh, solo uh, spotlight. Uh, Soul Eater also has a female protagonist. Oh, Maka. That's another reason I want to read or watch uh, Soul Eater. Maka looks fucking feral. Maka is amazing. I love her dearly. Um, I would say Ass Class's female character is really good. Yeah. I mean, just look at uh, Irina, who managed to be sexy and badass. Mm-hmm. She's... Uh, of course, there's also... Um... Oh, shit, I almost forgot. Claymore also has a female protagonist. Claymore, yeah. How was Claymore What's... start to your, to your mind? The... Claymore's start is fairly good, but it starts picking up after the um, the city arc. I I don't I, remember it very well. I've only read it the once, and I don't think I was a huge fan of it in general. I didn't think it was bad, but I just didn't think it was especially no, my thing. No, you said it was moderately good, but yeah. not anything spectacular. Yeah. But yeah, other will... than that, I'm struggling to come up with other series with good female characters. Which is such a shame. Yeah. Dr. Stone, you could say, has good Dr. Stone, characters. yeah. Because Kohaku is a great character. Um, Kohaku, Suika, yeah. several of the supporting female cast are really good. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, yeah a I... lot of them... The, the, the issue is a lot of uh, shonen series either treat the female characters as love interests first and foremost or as damsels in need of saving yeah and yeah let, let's just go through the ones that uh, that that do it poorly uh just going up from the viz website naruto we've already mentioned kishimoto is god awful at riding women uh yu gi oh uh, wasn't much better bleach uh well bleach at least has some good female characters like yoriichi mm. yoriichi uh, the less said about but the female characters in Dragon Ball, the better. Uh, um, I will say Bulma and Videl are well written. The rest are not. The so issue much. is Bul Bulma is the is the exception. The rest just get turned into baby makers. Well, at least in Android 18's case, she wants to just settle down and have a family life. It's not bad that they want to settle down and have a family life, because that's what they all want to do. That's what Chi Chi, Videl, and Android 18 as the three big female characters that used to be part of the plot and used to be fighters. It's just the fact that all of them do that. Yeah, that is the issue there. Uh, 
Uh, food Why wars. Are so many food wars. Ooh. Oh, food wars has a complicated relationship with his female character. Yeah. I because some of them are legitimately good. Megami but... was really fucking good, but yeah. Megami is great. Alice is great. Uh, Erina Rindo. in parts is is fairly good. In parts. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get characters like uh, side characters like Rindo, who is such a fascinating character who mm. does not get nearly enough focus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember her now. Uh. Demon Slayer. Right. Let's be real, Demon Slayer is not particularly great to its female characters. I would argue that it's better than most. It's better than, than the bottom tier, like Naruto, but I would not say that it's particularly also... great. Considering no. it's, it's one main female character doesn't talk for 80% of the manga. And once she does start talking, she stops appearing. <laughs> there is also... I think, ironically, she is probably the worst handled of the major female characters. I would agree with that. I would agree with that, to be fair. But the issue is... Like, the is other that... three female... The other, like, handful of female characters of note are all handled fairly well. So what is it? There's uh, Shinobu. There's Ka there's Shinobu, Mitsuri, Kanao, and Aoi, as well as um, mm. one of the major demons. Yes. Those, I think, are all handled fairly well and have very interesting characters and roles in the story. Uh, in terms of handled badly, um, the sound harsherers' wives ended up just being damsels in distress. Mm. Which was a shame, because they looked really interesting. And then they were kidnapped, and then they got sent away before the fight. Mm. To be fair, the sound harsherer also retired. Yes, he did. But that was, you know, That's after the fight. Stuff. That was after the fight. Mm. Let's not go into any more of that before we get yeah. into too, too deep into spoilers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I mean... Um, oh, Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, no. Do we have to discuss how it treats its uh, female characters, or can we just sort of leave that one alone and just say that it's done incredibly horrifically? <laughs> I mean, like the central issue is that the vast majority of the female cast have their roles in the story revolve around the male characters. Mm -hmm. That is the core issue here. But I mean, let's look at fucking weekly show. Like, we fucking bag on Weekly Shonen Jump for uh, its female characters. I don't think Weekly Shonen Magazine is much better. No, because it has both Seven Deadly Sins and Fairy Tale, which have some very glaring issues. It has Seven Deadly Sins, it has all three of fucking Marshima series. <laughs> uh, it has... Fire Force is a complicated one. Yes. Because, on the one hand, you have Maki, who is an all-around total badass, and one of the best characters in the series. But on the other hand, she doesn't, she doesn't get near enough attention, and the one who gets it instead is Tamaki, whose only thing is fan service. Oh yeah, speaking of fan service, going back to Fairy Tale, that's the key issue with the female characters, is that they are almost always used for fan service. Mm-hmm. Even the youngest member of the cast, who is a young teenager. Yeah. Which is not great. There's a reason why I haven't re read or watched Fairy Tale. <laughs> I'm going to be blame honest. You. <laughs> I don't blame you. And again, that's that's not to say that all of uh, Weekly Shonen Magazine's uh, series have bad... Um, bad female character representation because there are there are a lot that um i mean there's would you count rent a girlfriend as good female representation uh i'd count some of the cast members as good representation but that's one out of the four main characters and it's the one with the, 
four main female characters, and it's the one with the least focus. Okay, so not great. Uh, Quintuplets was in Weekly Shonen Magazine. That one's actually pretty good. Uh, Senryu Girl like, was in Weekly Shonen Magazine. I cannot speak to that because I have not read the manga. I mean, the the anime, I quite liked um, how the female the characters were treated. Good. The anime mm-hmm. was quite good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, domestic girlfriend. Bruh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the less I'm reminded of that series, the better. I had to do it. I'm sorry, I saw it and had to do it. Uh, I hate that. I know. I know you hate it, and for good fucking reason. But I'm never letting it go. I'm the one who should never let it go. What the ending was a fucking shit show, man. Oh yeah, here's another one with not especially great female characters. Well, in fairness, it's not just a female character thing. Most of the characters are bad. Attack on Titan. Mm. No, the, the female characters deserve reference because of how like the narrative treats a lot of them. Mm. Actually, Attack on Titan is like, not weekly show the magazine, have... but. Attack on Titan is Kodansha, in general. Yes. It's still a shonen magazine, and it still has an issue with how its female characters arcs play out. Yes. We can talk about that in more detail at a later date, though. Hmm. I mean, what, what I will say for now is that the main female character is defined by... Uh, her attachment to the main male character. Yeah, and that's not great, especially since her character arc also revolves around said relationship. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, as, as I said, we, we will eventually schedule uh, a roast of Attack on Titan. And, oh boy, is that going to be just me ranting for two hours while everyone else sits and eats popcorn? I mean, we might chime in every now and then, but yeah. I mean, that's that's what I'm imagining fucking uh, the Rose to Harry Potter is going to be as well. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I might... Fuzzy's going to chime in a lot yeah. more on that one. I might get some chime in from Fuzzy on that one, but yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to plan that one out as well. Like, actually have a proper script and notes for that one. Because if you couldn't mm-hmm. tell, most of these, uh, I'm just fucking winging it. Mm-hmm. But we have reached the two-hour mark, so we should probably start to wrap it up. So, I think in summary, um, you know, the differences between a a sufferer of early Shona syndrome and one that manages to buck the trend is. Uh, good pacing, which I think at this point can probably be reasonably said to be quick pacing. Um, not well, like not quick pacing per se, but deliberate pacing. Yeah, because I because I think out of the concise. yeah concise pacing. Because I, I think it. out of the series that we that we said that were a good example of um, of that, I think probably Black Clover is the best example of good pacing mm-hmm. um, well some might say Black Clover is a tad rushed but One Piece isn't badly paced either it's just it's long mm. One Piece isn't badly paced for how fucking long it is I mean if you were to you know if you were to time times the ch- or multiply the cap- chapter count of Black Clover to make it around where One Piece is right now and do the same for like the arcs. I'm sure it would probably end up with the same same arc counts as One Piece. <laughs> mm. Um. So pacing, um, spacing out your info dumps. Because uh, again, I mean, we mentioned it a little bit, but that really was what fucking sunk. What was it even called now? Uh. Was that one Samurai 8? Uh, the Kishimoto yeah. one? Yeah, Samurai 8. Samurai 8. 
that's what sunk it for sure is that it just went into info dump after info dump after info dump um mm-hmm. and just having a good good set of strong characters that you can uh easily explain the motivations for while also still making them likable uh because again that's you know that's what my hero managed to do really well it managed to make a likable protagonist with easy to understand and easy to relate to motivations very quickly within the first chapter and then it managed to get onto the rest of the world building that would be where naruto once again failed <laughs> One day, we'll probably have a roast of Naruto as well, actually, now that I think about it. We'll be doing a lot of roasts. Oh, I know Fuzz- Fuzzy has been pushing hard for that one. We will schedule it. We'll, or we will put it on the list of things that we are going to do. <laughs> because that seems like it would be a fun two hours. Because that one wouldn't just be me ranting for two hours. That would be everyone ranting for two hours. Yeah, Naruto is not great. But yeah, I, th- I think that's what really sums up, you know... A, a good start to a shonen compared to a bad one. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not to say that if a series suffers from early shonen syndrome, that it's a bad series. Not at all. Um, no, and honestly, the best mark of a series is that it gets better as it mm. goes on. It's just that there are some series that manage to start good and end up increasing to great as time goes on. One Piece is probably the prime example of that. I was going to bring up Ass Class, but that's I I have a love for for that series. That is. I mean that that equals my love of One Piece. So mm. we're just saying what we love. Yeah. But yes, I think that is. Uh, sorry, uh, all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this look at early shonen series and. The problems or pluses there within. Um, as mentioned, uh, points here in stream and in the tweet, this is going to be the start of uh, a three part series because we are also going to cover the shonen escalation problem and the shonen ending problem. Shonen ending problem, mm-hmm. we actually, uh, the two of us with Gen discussed after the, um, after the tabletop stream on Thursday. Um, so, you know, for sure, we've got a lot to talk about there as well. Uh, escalation problem is also going to be interesting. No idea when they'll be, when we have some free time and, uh... Our schedule's pretty packed up right now. Yeah, we, we actually have stuff scheduled, um, all the way up until pretty much the end of July. Yeah. Um. But, um... That wraps it up for today. In terms of uh, upcoming future streams, no D and D tomorrow. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of Fuzzy, so it's unlikely that there's going to be a Yu Gi Oh stream. So instead, I'm probably just going to play some more Mafia because I love that game, uh, and I need to get it done before uh, the Mass Effect stream start. So. Oh boy, that's going to be a fun time. So, Mafia streams are going to be Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is going to be a lot of fun if I do end up uh, doing a uh, Mafia stream on Sunday, because it's probably going to be the end of the game, and then me getting the bulletproof car, and then causing complete chaos. And I, Ooh, cannot, I cannot wait for that, because I love causing chaos with the bulletproof car. My fi- my favorite thing is because in Mafia they if you get a certain level of um, wanted the police will set up roadblocks with like cars across the road, and if you manage to time it right on on the right bit of road with the bulletproof car you can have you can basically squash a police car between you and a tram, and it's fucking oh. hilarious. <laughs> uh, oh, that does sound fun. And then Thursday... It's like a more refined Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Then Thursday, uh, I believe it's probably going to be another tabletop stream. We haven't exactly decided Most what likely. we're going to play just yet. Uh, I believe 
Friday is when the Mass Effect uh, free ma Master comes out. Friday, Friday is when it comes out. Uh, the first stream for that will be the Tuesday, I think. Well, I need to talk about fuzz talk too fuzzy about it, but I believe it's going to be Tuesdays that we play that. Um, we'll just That's see like when plan. fuzzy is free, basically. <laughs> Because I have very little on yeah. that I can't reschedule. Mm -hmm. And next Saturday, we are going to be talking about One Piece again. This mm -hmm. time, the Thriller Bark and Sabaudi arcs. I'm looking forward to that, because Thriller Bark is actually one of my uh, favorite arcs. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, and Sabaudi is going to be one fun one to end on. Yeah. I mean, just in general, <laughs> th th for, for, for me, from this point onwards, One Piece will only... Uh, trended up, I would say. Yeah. Honestly, like, One Piece was always on an upward trend, but after, like, from Sabaudi onwards, it's just insane well, as, levels of quality. I, I've mentioned my issues with um, those first three sagas, um, and especially Water 7 and, and his lobby, but uh, certainly... Certainly from this point onwards, there is only one arc I didn't particularly like, and it's the arc that nobody particularly likes um, in Fishman Island. I quite like Fishman Island. Okay, it's the, one that, the, the one that nobody particularly loves. Mm. The one that well, people we'll say is basically the weakest arc in One Piece. We'll talk about that more when we actually discuss it. But in the meantime, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, watching and listening to us rant for two hours and change about uh, shonen manga and uh, how the, most of them did not start off all that great. And you can be comforted by the sight of our good old friend the the character that when that when they were introduced really made me think this series is gonna be a fucking winner. It's Panda. Ah uh, yes, Panda. Good night, everybody. Later.